Wes Miller, uh, head men's basketball coach. CJ Frederick. My name is Victor Larkin. My name is Seema Sakoshis. I'm Odu Wama. I think it's just really exciting. We want to play on the biggest stage. This is a program with a very rich history. This is the first year they're going to be in the Big 12. Well, you want to play against the best? The movement to me. The movement. The process of every single day. We're going to care, we're going to work, we're going to fight, we're going to respond. When everybody wants to buy into that, that's when movement happens. It's the greatest brand in sports. To be aligned with Jordan Brand's a big deal. At Cincinnati, it, it has a deeper meaning. I was, I was paying homage to the guys who before me. Right, there's a level of nostalgia, there's, there's history, um, and that makes it even more special. Cincinnati is going back to where it's supposed to be. And I'm, I'm excited to lead this program into the, to the best basketball league in America. The Big 12 were phenomenal, but nothing was better than fifth third on the University of Cincinnati. Let's make this the best environment in college basketball. Can't stop my shine, shine. can't stop my grind. grind. Foot on the gas, gas. too quick to catch. Can't stop my shine, no, no. can't stop my grind. No, no. Foot on the gas, too quick to catch. Let's get after it today. You already know what time it is. I'm gonna make like three in a row. Uh, well, two. Yeah, you know, losing John a year ago impacted our team in ways that I don't think any of us understood, um, or I don't think anybody that wasn't around us are capable of understanding. Good shot. Good pace, Dan. Uh, well, well. Yeah, bitch. You get caught on camera, bro. Uh, John Ray Kane, pre preach the gospel, bro. What you got to say, man? What you got to say, bro? You know, certainly it was obvious. It's going to affect your depth. It's going to affect. Uh, who we are defensively, it's going to affect that, that edge or that fight to our team. Um, and we knew that right away. But John had so many other effects on a team when he's playing that, that it really hurt our basketball club a year ago. You know, he brings others around him to his level. Good rep, boy. Good rep, man. Good rep, good rep, good rep. Good shot, Ski Moss. <laughs> oh! Night down, shorty. Good shot, boy. Hey, ah, we good, we good. Next play, next play, next play. He plays with such ferocity and competitive edge, and he makes people want to play that way. He's a great leader in the locker room. He's an unselfish player. I say all that because now he's bringing all that back to our team. Uh, he's an improved player from a skill set. Uh, where he was a couple years ago. He's got that experience and that maturity that C.J. Frederick and others have. Um, and he's, he's also a, a great leader in his own right, especially by example. You can't put a price tag now on having guys that have been through the trials and tribulations within your program and they've come back year after year. And continuity in our game is becoming more rare. When you have continuity with the right kind of people that are invested in the same things that we're invested in as a program, I think there's a real recipe for success there. You know, uh, Odie and Vic are terrific examples of that. Uh, they've, they've had success here. They've had failure here. They've been through some great times and some difficult times together. And now they're at a place that they just want to win at the highest possible level, and they're willing to do whatever they need to do to help this program get there. I mean, it feel, it's, a, it's a good feeling. It's also a feeling of like, not so, not, not so much trying to 
like keep keep telling guys what to do or like oh we gotta do things this way da, 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 da. but it's more so like setting by example like going out there playing a certain way like playing leaving all like playing with effort leaving it all out on the floor it's sort of like that type of thing i try to not do too much but i will say if i see somebody's younger struggling or having some issues i've had and some things for example i would tell them just just don't take it too seriously like what do you had a bad couple of practices don't take it too, too seriously don't don't uh, get down on yourself and don't start not believing in yourself because of those two like because it's a long season vic and john both are just amazing players great players uh you know they're, they're type of guys who every single time they take the court they trying to really go at the other team they trying to really leave it all out there and we're sort of like that that staple group um i think it just helps i think it helps taking on a bunch of load off of each and every one of us. Adversities I've had kind of made me who I am right now. It starts from uh, being hurt, language barrier. Tough times make you who like tougher person. It's my first time playing with a European over in the, in the NCAA. So it's really fun because, you know, we can talk about European basketball and like we kind of have the same, same mindset and uh, off the court, it's really fun. You know, we both we both speak Russian. We can we can communicate. We can make jokes like that. Seamless. Yeah, like I said in one press conference in Big 12, I was praying for having another European. Now I got him. So uh, I mean, it's really I'm really happy. It makes me <laughs> really happy to have another European, especially like that close to my country. I feel like we have a lot of things to talk about. Yeah, I think it's kind of unique how Europe is such a big place, but now that we, you have two, European, two Eastern Europeans on the team, you feel like you have to immediately have a connection, and we do. Because I, like, I played in Lithuania before, he lived in Russia actually, so like, we have a lot of things in common, and that makes it really, like, that's what I've been looking for all these three years. But uh, yeah, I, it's been really fun. Yeah, you know what's funny? Um, when I was, you know, being recruited out of high school, I, I never really wanted to stay close to home. Um, and then as I've gotten older, I've uh, kind of started to feel myself wanting to come home. Uh, CJ Frederick, number one, he's a Cincinnati guy. Um, he's a Cincinnati guy. He grew up coming to games here. Being in the city that I grew up in, um, I absolutely love Cincinnati. Um, I love growing up in Cincinnati. We tried to recruit him when he transferred from Iowa, when we first got in the jobs here that spring and was able to build a, a pretty good relationship with him in a short period of time. Uh, but getting him here now, it's kind of the right time. It, you know, going into the Big 12, you're going into a league with a ton of experience and maturity. You know, it's not just great players. You know, it's great players that are experienced and mature. Yeah, Coach was a huge part, um, Coach and the entire staff. Um, you know, I believed in, in what he believed in me and his vision for me was, you know, the best thing for me. You know, I think I kind of know what it means um, to wear Cincinnati across my chest. Um, I remember when I was coming back home the first time when I had committed to Cincinnati and I was crossing the bridge to come into Cincinnati and just kind of gave me the chills, like, man, I'm, I'm home, I'm back. You know, in itself, just having my friends and family there is gonna be awesome. Just running out with, you know, that Cincinnati across my chest and I'm representing, you know, the city that I that I grew up in, that I love. And to me, that's a huge deal. You know, uh, again, this is somewhere where people are passionate about it and people really care about it. Uh, I wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. Our, our players wouldn't have come here if that wasn't the case. In my first two years here, I've been blown away with the support in Fifth Third, night after night. It was a dream. I was a kid that if you asked, what do you want to do when you grow up? I said, I want to play professional basketball, and then when I'm done, I want to be a college basketball coach. Um, and I didn't dream about just coaching anywhere. I dreamed about coaching at a, a program with rich history, rich tradition, and around a bunch of people that really care about it. You know, I found that at Cincinnati. I, I feel so lucky and fortunate to be here, and the responsibility of, of leading this program is something that is the, the challenge and the thrill of my life. The ambition of, of Cincinnati uh, matches the ambitions that I have for my career and for what I want to achieve. Fans supporting me or like cheering my name louder than others and uh, just like social media, all the like, hey Vic and uh, on the streets and stuff like that. It means honestly a lot. 
Uh, we're going to try to do our part to, to play a way that makes people proud that we represent them here at Cincinnati. And uh, I want to say I appreciate y'all for doing that. It gives me a lot of energy. and like It's just ridiculous. It's crazy. The fan love, uh, the support, and the amount of just people who care about that, that CPAW, you know. People who care about that CPAW is ridiculous. I, I hope at the end of the year we're able to say, man, those environments across the Big 12 were phenomenal, but nothing was better than fifth third on the campus of, of University of Cincinnati. Yeah, come here. Who the fastest person is on the team? You. <laughs> Easy, easiest, easiest question yet on this page. Day Day Thompson. Thompson. Thomas. <laughs> he talking about Thompson. <laughs> I got nervous. I got nervous. You. Get away. Get away. Who? Me. Stop. Stop what you doing. I'm just saying, get away. Me, though. Who run them lanes? Nah, Day Day. I'm going to give it to Day Day, bro. He's the fastest on the team for real. <laughs> Ray, who, you, who the best friends on the team? Rayvon Griffith. <laughs> Rayvon Griffith. Oh, you bro. I'm fussing on you, bro. He's <laughs> all right. He said, what? I'm over here like, I'm fussing on him, bro. That's for real. Yo, he always looks like Nah, I'm not going to lie. It's definitely Dana. Yeah. 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 It's Dana. Hey, we're going to ask Jizzle. He's shooting, too. Hey, Jizzle, hold up. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Who you think the fastest person on the team? Fastest? The fastest. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm the fastest, bro. Ray Cap it. Ray Cap it. He's just chatting. Who you think the fastest person on the team? Fastest? The fastest. You. Bro. One. Bro, no. How you one. doing? Yes, sir. Shadar. 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 It's one. For sure. It's one. Hey, you see. It is. Who you think the best person on the team? It's one. It's one. <laughs> hey, just, 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 this one's a close second, but it's one. It's one. Ray say he the fastest. Right. Hey, Els is a sleeper. Right. Els is a sleeper. Yeah. One four. Anybody pick the? Anybody That's pick? Anybody pick one four? <laughs> one four. It's understandable. It's definitely one of us. Who? <laughs> probably, probably, probably you. If I. Yeah, you. <laughs> you got me by this much. That much. Yeah. Fastest person on the team? Yeah. Oh, definitely you. Me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, for sure. You think very faster than me? Oh, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Nah. We're all competitors you know, at this level of basketball. Coaches, players, we want to play on the biggest stage. We want to play in the best environments, and we want to play against the best teams. Uh, over. The last handful of years, it's undeniable that's been the Big 12 Conference in men's basketball. That league is ridiculous. Still the number one basketball conference in, in America. That league is not. Yeah, you know, it's a huge step for everybody. Uh, the Big 12 is arguably, you know, one of the best basketball conferences in the country. For us as a basketball program to be on that stage is huge. It's definitely an exciting uh, era that begins for UC and all the fans. Cincinnati's on some big things. I think we're doing bigger, better things. And I think it's more so just a, a lot of excitement rather than, 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 than pressure. There's no really like off days. Like every single night is a battle, it's a fight. I'd say I'm definitely feeling excitement the most. I mean, you know, this is a program with a very rich history. And uh, this is the first year they're gonna be in the Big 12. And uh, I get to be one of the people that's, you know, leading them into the Big 12, which is, you know, a, a very big deal for me and for the programs. Although now that I say it, it kind of sounds like there should be a lot of pressure, but everything I'm feeling is just excitement and I just want the season to start. I feel like we've been preparing for it. It's not a pressure. Um, I would say it's more like a responsibility now to represent our program like winning culture and all that, and all the alumni. This is why I play basketball. You want to play against the best and play in the best conference. So it's a great opportunity. And like exciting part is there, but also a lot of responsibility comes with it. So it's exciting. It's exciting to, to be a part of that. Uh, it's going to also challenge us in a lot of ways that we might not even understand yet because we haven't experienced it. But uh, I really believe those challenges and those trials and some of the things we have ahead are really going to help elevate the program. And, you know, 
know, I, I believe it's exciting to, to play and compete against the best. We're going to care, we're going to work, we're going to fight, and we're going we're gonna to respond. And uh, that's what we want to be about. That's what, I think that's what can make us uh, a very good team next season because, you know, n not every team is going to have their best day every game. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's a daily set of values that we're trying to live by. And uh, it's, it's not all that different than, or it's very similar to the values that, that I've always tried to approach basketball with, whether it was as a player, as a coach, but maybe saying it in a way that makes a little more sense to, to our, our team and our young people. It goes, coaches care about players, players care about coaches, about tra tra athletic trainers. Um, but it means what it says, I and mean, we care. We care at a high level. We, we care about each other. We care about our team's success. success. We're willing to make sacrifices for our team's success. We care about this program and the history of this program. We care about this institution. We care about Cincinnati. We, we wear the name of a city across our chest. Like that, that, that's a responsibility. Like we care deeply about that and, and many other things. Work ethic is work ethic, right? But there's a very high standard to that and everything that we're doing. And we hopefully that's understood, but we, we stated that we work at a very high level to a very high standard. Coach Miller is very intense. He's an intense guy, but uh, that's what I came here for. I mean, especially uh, with my experience in the transfer portal, you know, you, talk, you get to talk to so many coaches and get to know so many of them. And uh, I, I respect them a lot. And, uh, and um, yeah, I, I put a lot of trust in him. And that's why I chose this program. You know, it, 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 it was mainly because of him, because I think he can get me to where I want to be. Yeah, Coach Miller means a lot. And he's done a lot of things for me. Like if we have any questions inside the record, like he will be on my side particularly, but like on any side as a player, it's like he wants us to succeed in our lives and he talks a lot about it, how he like values the education. He wants to see us like in 20 years as successful people and men. The kind of edge that we have, um, our mental and physical toughness, like fighting in that sense, and then, you know, responding to whatever's around us, right? Not being circumstantial. You're never really gonna be tested until something bad happens. Um, and when, you know, when I hear those words, I think of the main one responding, you know, in tough times, tough practice, uh, things aren't gonna go our way, bad things are gonna happen, but it's, it's trusting our process and, and trusting in how we work and how we respond and how we fight. And that will determine how we bounce back and be resilient throughout the whole season. I think of Cincinnati. Um, I mean, that's literally what, what we are. That's literally what we do. You know, and there's all kinds of things that are going to happen, good and bad. How we respond to those things will define us more than what those things really are. So there's a lot more depth to it than that. But, you know, those are the day-to-day -day things that we're trying to instill in our team and, and execute uh, in any circumstance that we're in. All right, everybody bring it in. Let's go. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I am saying it's going to be worth it. Two feet on three. One, two, three. Two feet. I think as a team, we've all kind of bought into what, what's going on. It's uh, putting pennies in the jar. Um, something so simple, but something you can't overlook. Literally saying that the blood, sweat, tears, it represents all that stuff. Over the course of, of the year, you know, throughout time, like you see how much work we've actually put in. And it's, it's really cool to see. Like dropping the pennies in the jar, it means like we reach our standards of practicing and get it better every day. That means that we that we came to work. Like we're not just showing up and then go home. Like we have to get something done out of practice. It's just a a, a metaphor for the the daily deposits that we believe in. That one day at a time growth mindset, right? At the at the end of every practice, we have to decide if we put pennies in the jar or or if we didn't. And uh, that goes back to the we care, we fight, we we work, and we respond. We can't control what happened yesterday. We can't control what's coming tomorrow, but we can control what we're doing right here in this moment. And if we meet those standards and values of what we just talked about, I mean, how we care, how we work, how we fight, how we respond, and we do that in the moment, we, we make that daily deposit to grow and improve. And if you keep doing that day after day, you know, that, that jar is a metaphor for how you continue to grow as, as individuals and as a team. And the last question is, um, in your words, what is the movement? Uh, e e e
The movement to me is just the, the process of every single day. Um, you know, when I hear the movement, um, you know, I, I know Coach's vision and I know our vision as a team. It's just the process of every day coming in, working, fighting, responding, playing with heart, playing with grit. The movement to me um, and to our program is the day-to-day -day process of getting our program back to national prominence, to where it belongs, where it's been over the course of the history of college basketball. It's just the movement of Cincinnati to the Big 12. You know, we're, we're going up and uh, we're, we're, Cincinnati is going back to where it's supposed to be. And uh, that's kind of what it means to me. It's, I would say it's one word instead of four. We care, we fight, we work, we respond. So all those things, it's like one big movement. So it, when everybody wants to buy into that, the, the coaching staff, everybody in the team, like wants to buy into it like and really take it seriously, that's when movement happens. You know, all the alumni who come through here, what they talk about, what they've been through, what they express, it's the movement to that, but also like a modern twist on it. So it's this process day to day of growth, one day, one moment, you know, one opportunity at a time. You know, certainly there's a lot of other aspects to it. You know, moving into the best basketball league in the country, moving back to a brand that we align with at the highest level. Th those are aspects that I think get people excited. But what it's really about is this day to day, one moment at a time process of growing till we get back to national prominence, which is where Cincinnati basketball belongs.